Hi, I'm Scott Noonan, the CEO of Audio Advice. Just coming out of this elevator to enter the basement of this home we've been working on for quite a while to this home entertainment mecca downstairs. It has everything from this killer wine cellar to a waiting room outside here, outside of the massage room in the basement, along with a full golf simulator sitting here. As you enter past this bar area, you go into a large seating theater that this video is gonna focus on today. Okay, so we're now here in the theater. One of the things a lot of you who've been watching my home theater videos have asked me to do is talk a lot more about design and layout. So uh, let's start, the size of this room is 21 feet deep by 19 feet long and it's 10 foot high. So this is a big room where we've got three full rows that we can fit into here. So the first thing we did was use the home theater tool at audiobytes.com that you can go use yourself for free. And it allowed us to lay out this room with the three rows. You'll notice also, instead of using home theater seats, this has a really cool setup in terms of sofa. So you can fit 12 people <laughs> before you even add bean bags or anything else in the front. So once we map that out, one of the things you'll notice in this room is that we needed a place for the door to come in, which meant we had to put an aisle on one side, which offsets the chairs and the screen. And obviously what we want to do is center the screen with the sofas um, and then put the speakers in a layout that matches with the chairs and the screen. So now once we had it all designed with the home theater tool, I want to show you the video I did when we first pre-wired it so you get a sense of what this room looked like at that point. Okay, so let's check out this room. We've just finished pre-wiring it, and you'll see this is a uh, JBL synthesis setup where we've got the right, center, and left. And notice in here, we've actually got it foamed behind, so we need to get everything laced in advance. And we've got the subwoofers in the bottom right there and the bottom left, the SSW3s where we've already got the back boxes in. And you'll see we've got side speakers here, same thing. It's been foamed in behind it. All of the lacing is done. The sconces are ready to go. Here are rear speakers as well, already brought down. Check this out here. This is where the projector is going to go, where we're actually hiding it in the back. This is the Sony GTZ 380 projector, which is 10,000 lumens, and we bring in 240 volts into this spot here. You'll see we've got the three um, rows of seats right here, and you look up in the ceiling, you can see we've already laced the Atmos. This is going to be an incredible room. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the video in this room. This is a large screen. This is a 165 inch diagonal Stewart acoustically transparent film screen. So we've got the speakers behind it. To fill a screen of that size in this throw distance and have it look incredible to match this amazing uh, space down here, we're using a Sony GTZ 380. Just to put in perspective, this has 10 thousand lumens. I mean, that is a massive amount, which gives us full capability to keep all the colors we want, get all the darks dark, the brights bright. It is a fabulous picture in this room. Okay, so let's switch over now and talk a little bit about the audio side of things. This room uses JBL synthesis speakers. And if you've seen any of our videos or seen any of our work talking about how you choose speakers for a home theater room, you know we love JBL synthesis speakers. Why? One, they're really high sensitivity, which gives us great dynamics. So you can hear the punch really fast. It can get loud and then super soft. They also have compression drivers. And as you probably know, compression drivers are way more efficient than traditional dome tweeters. So when we throw power at them, we can really control a lot more power at you. So in this particular room, we're using SEL2s for the right, center, and left. Those have three eight-inch mid-range woofers plus a one and a half inch compression driver. Okay, so that's the front three. Then we're using SSW3s, which have dual 10 inch subs, and they're hidden here and there, which you saw in the earlier shot. That provides plenty of bass into this room. And when combined with the Anthem 1140 surround sound receiver, which allows us to calibrate each one and phase align the bass in this room, it provides great bass across all 12 seats in this room. Okay, so now let's switch. You saw in the earlier 
uh, video when we were doing the pre-wire, the sides and the rears are SCL6s. The SCL6s have four five and a quarter inch mid-range drivers, so not quite what the fronts have, plus a matching one inch compression driver. Now, one of the things I wanna focus on, and one of the reasons so many people around the world are using our home theater tool on our website is to get the locations of all the speakers right. And the one that's most challenging for people when they try to do the math, particularly for those of you who are home theater experts or installers around the country who watch these videos, is getting the Atmos speakers correct. So what I wanna focus on for a second, we're actually using six Atmos speakers. These are the SEL8s, which also have the matching five and a quarter inch driver that you saw in the sides and in the rears, plus the one inch compression driver. But these are angled at a 45 degree angle meaning there are six in this room, they're all angling and able to cover every single seat in this room with all six. Now, where things get tricky is that a lot of times you wanna place your Atmos speakers to focus on the main listening position, which in this room is in the center seat right here. However, in the ideal world, you don't want to make it great for this and terrible for the other. So we have a slider in the home theater tool that allows you to slide from making it great for one seat all the way to making it uh, perfect for all of the seats and there's a little bit of trade-off there. Well, it turns out if you play with the tool, it makes it really easy by using color changes to help you find the perfect spot where you've optimized for your center positions here, but also all of your speakers you know, are outside of every single uh, seat. So you'll see all of the right speakers are just to the right of the farthest right person. All of the left speakers are to the left of the farthest left person. The front speakers are just in front of the ears of the front and the rears are just to the rear of the back, meaning everybody gets the correct sound. So now what I wanna do is show you the rack room and how we isolated it away from the entire theater. Follow me to check this out. Okay, we've walked past the simulator, past the elevator, into the gym. Now we're gonna cut from the gym and go through the sauna and the massage room to get to where we've hidden the racks. All right, now we've made it to the rack room. By the way, if you wanna see how we've integrated all that stuff into killer audio and home control, watch our other video that we're putting out on all the electronics in this entire home. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on the theater. Our team is finishing up this rack that's used for the entire home control system. We're gonna focus this particular video just on the theater portion. So you'll see we've got the Kaleidoscape, we have an Apple TV in here, we have the MRX 1140 from Anthem, which gives us great room calibration capability with Arc Genesis. And then we have an MCA 325, which gives us three amp channels with massive amounts of power just for the front three. And then finally, for the two subwoofers, they have their own amplifier as well. All right, let's jump back over to the theater. Okay, so one of the things I wanna talk about here is design. In other words, we focus on colors in a room. We don't want them too bright, but we want them to be beautiful. The other thing that I talk about a lot in theater design is lighting control in the room. So you'll see we've got these sconces in the room, but we've got some very far forward. They look gorgeous. However, if you really more critically want to watch a movie, I want to be able to control just these front sconces so I can push one button, the fronts go off, the backs are still on, and now you can see the light is no longer shining on the screen. That's one of the things I cover in the whole lighting design video that I do in our home theater design series that you should check out if you're building a theater. So I want to talk just for a second about isolation in terms of sound and acoustics in a room like this. So you saw when we did the pre-wire that all these walls are foamed. That does two things. One, it keeps sounds from the outside of this room from coming in, but also protects outside of this room. And I'll make a whole nother video on exactly how to do acoustic isolation. But the other thing I want to talk about is you'll see we have a really thick door here that's completely solid that shuts completely out the sound from the outside. But also, I wanna talk about ventilation for a second. You'll see here, this is the intake for the HVAC system. And you put this at the back end of the room and at the other total opposite part of the room is where we have the vents. We've oversized both the intake and the vents. So when the HVAC system is on, you hear nothing, which is incredible. The other thing that's making this room sound so great and so quiet right now is we have floor to ceiling acoustic panels and we've designed a mixture of absorptive panels and diffusive panels to actually manage the sound in this room and it sounds incredible. So 
one of the things we try to do in every home theater of this caliber is to make one simple remote uh, so you don't have to fumble around on a bunch of different remotes. So you can see this is a Control 4 remote here, and you can click Watch. The homeowner can choose between the Kaleidoscape and the Apple TV. Assume they choose Kaleidoscape. It now has simple controls. If you go back home and they want to change lighting in the room, one button press here. They can change the sconces, anything else in the room, change scenes. Or if they want to change the projector mode so that they're watching a 16 by 9 piece, they can hit 16 by 9. It'll change the projector to fit 16 by 9 or hit uh, 235 and it'll switch it to 235. So again, every room that you're doing, you want to make it super, super simple so anyone can use it. We even have sound modes so it can change between Dolby, DTS, and all channel stereo depending on what they're listening to. So one of the last things we do in every home theater is to do the room calibration. In this room, we have Arc Genesis. It is one of the best calibration systems out there. And honestly, when we go into homes where someone says, hey, someone else installed this theater or I did it myself, it doesn't sound right. Can you help me with it? It usually comes down to either the electronics, the room design, or calibration. So if you wanna do a room and really nail it, and you don't know how to do room calibration and you've got an anthem, be sure to check out the video I did on Arc Genesis. It walks you through everything you need to know. Or if you're using us, we're obviously doing it ourselves for you. If you like this video, be sure to click like and subscribe to get more content like this. And if you're thinking about building a home theater or upgrading your own, go over to our home theater page at audioadvice.com. We've got the free home theater design tool there, plus an inspiration gallery, a bunch of buyer's guides and how-tos and everything you need. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.